Were you ever in a situation where someone hurt you and you said to yourself, oh my God, they hurt me so deeply. I can never, ever forgive them for the rest of my life. Well, when you do that, who does it hurt? Is it you or the other person? Learn with me and listen to Dr. Fred Luskin. Hello. I am Brigitte Bamakanti, registered nurse, faith-based holistic coach, and founder of Healthy You Lifestyle Center. If you want to develop healthy habits for life one step at a time, click the red subscribe button and the bell icon now. Forgiveness is something we don't think about when somebody hurts us. We carry that for the rest of our life. When we do that, there is something that we don't realize who it hurts. Does it hurt you or the other person? Listen to Dr. Fred Luskin, who is the founder of the Forgiveness Projects and is currently the director of Stanford Forgiveness Project. Hello, Fred. Thank you for joining us today. And um, I just want to say, I really, really appreciate you taking time out of your busy day to join us today. I just want to start off asking you, um, what led you to writing your book about forgive for good, about forgiveness, primarily the forgiveness training program from your PhD of counseling and psychology, you moved into the forgiveness training back in Stanford. Uh, what, what was my my dissertation for my degree. Okay. Um, but I, I had a long standing interest in like the relationship between spiritual kind of factors and science. So I knew that I wanted to do something that would bridge those two experiences, the science and the religion spirit. And this was almost 25 years ago. So the, those two worlds were not talking to each other. And, it, you know, it was a very different world. So when I decided to do a research project on forgiveness, I think I was the third person like out there who had ever done anything like that. And I was first interested in doing something on compassion but because nobody had ever touched that field, I couldn't as a graduate student kind of invent a field. Okay. So um, the, the precipitating interest in forgiveness besides practicality was that I personally had been very badly hurt and I, I couldn't get over it. And so you know, I struggled for years and I figured that if, if I, who was just about a licensed therapist at that time, couldn't do it, there were probably a lot of other people who couldn't do it. Yeah, yeah, that's very difficult um, topic, you know, forgiveness. Um, you know, that's leading into me asking you, you know, when you say, you know, forgive people, that again, it says, you know, somebody that has been hurt, let's say I was hurt by on several diff different occasions and whatever I perceived was that's unforgivable. It was too much of a hurt. How could I forgive somebody? Are they they're going to take advantage of me? So that's what goes on in people's mind when you when you say forgiveness, how could I, how can I get over that to, you know, to move on to forgiveness? Some people do take advantage of you. I mean, that's just that's just a life truth. It's so how long you will be able to forgive them? How long do you want to be bitter around it? Is the question, right? I mean, it's yeah. it's true that people will be often unkind, unfaithful, dishonest. But that's not really the question. The question is, what do you do about it? And how long do you want to suffer about it 
those are the forgiveness questions. You're not going to change human nature. So the focus is on me, you know, not about that other person that I'm trying to forgive. It's how long do I want, want to hold on to that inside of me, which is going to keep hurting me inside. And how much do you want it to prejudice your other relationships? So if you hold a grudge against somebody, you tend to transfer that to other people. Mm. Like I don't trust you makes it easier to not trust the next person. And so you got to be careful with the grudge holding. That's that's the piece that's not so simple. Human beings can be very difficult and they can do awful things and they can be self-absorbed and they can do all sorts of stuff. But we have to ask ourselves, how do we want to respond to that? Okay. So because how do we want to respond to that? And also, as you said, it might reflect in the, our other relationships moving forward. And that yeah. would not be healthy relationship at that time. Well, I mean, if you tell yourself, I mean, there's some maturity in recognizing that people don't always do the right thing. That's a form of maturity to not expect them to do kindness or goodness. But it's what you do with that maturity. Do you become bitter? Do you stop trusting? Do you take advantage of people in return because you've been hurt? There's a whole host of questions that that brings up. Um, so it's 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 a dicey thing once you become aware of the fact that not everybody's going to be good and not everybody's going to do the right thing. Then you spend much of your life trying to figure out what's the most skillful response to that. Okay, so um, first thing is being aware. You need to be aware of, okay, what has happened? What do I want to do with that? Where do I want to take it? And another thing, what you have said is, you know, it could turn into a vicious cycle, you know, yeah. it, over and over. As you see in some um, families, you know, we, we hear in the news and all that, they did this because, you know, their parents did that or grandparents. It's just a vicious cycle that keeps passing on. And you want to cut the cord at some point. If you well, want it also alters your perceptions. Yeah. You know, because if you see in your mind, if you rehearse, don't trust men, don't trust Italians, don't trust this, then you are operating at a perceptual experience that will find things that people are doing wrong more easily. Yeah. Because you're always suspecting of something might go wrong. And, you know, your guard is up all the time. So you're not completely settled inside. <laughs> so the forgiveness piece is to give you a chance to meet current experience without so much prejudice. Mm bring so much garbage with you when you're in your current life so you have a better chance of reacting to your current life i love what you said in your book uh forgive for good um i have so many pages marked in that book um <laughs> you you said that you know how much uh space do you want to uh rent for that yeah person that you don't like or you know because that's a wasted time and energy onto that person that you don't even care for sometimes you do care for them but what you want to do is have some choice about what kind of space you give in your mind so if somebody hurts you badly for a few months you're going to have to ruminate about it because there's no other way to come to understanding. But if you find yourself ruminating two years after it, 
or obsessing over and over about what could I have done? What could they have done? You're wasting your time. But it requires some rumination short term because that's how your mind rebalances itself. Like, what the hell did I do? And what did they do? And how do I cope? You need that part of the process. So by doing that, you're aware of whatever the problem that has happened, that awareness kicks in when you kind of try to reflect on that initially. And you've also been destabilized and you have to figure out some way to get back to balance. And part of that is ruminating and obsessing. It's just that you don't want that to become a long-term habit. Okay. So how long should I be ruminating on that situation? Well, it depends on how serious it was. So if somebody cuts you off in traffic, you might want to ruminate for five seconds. If somebody lies to you, maybe it'll take a week. If somebody, you know, if your partner cheats on you, and tells you that they don't care for you and they never did, maybe it'll take six months. But you want to be open at some point to newness and not just playing the past. Okay. You have a new life coming in. There's, there's a new life every moment, I mean, at some level. And you want to be careful that it's not overwhelmed by past junk. Yeah, how long are we going to keep carrying that uh, junk around us? In the same old way. What, what happens is people get stuck and then they stop growing. So like feeling terrible about something doesn't mean you're stuck. I mean, if, if something painful happens to you, you have to experience it. You have to go through it. You have to, you're going to feel badly. But you don't have to stay bad in that forever. That's the forgiveness piece. Okay. So after that, try to kind of move on. Um, so how does some of these things, you know, if you just keep, you know, mulling over that same situation, how does that physically affect our, our body? Um, exactly. There has been some research done. You just keep on going and you keep on going and you keep on going. Yeah, it's, um, it's a deep human problem in particular when groups do it. So you find a lot of the bad things in this world is when groups of people join in their grievances. So that that will also reflect on our physical symptoms, you know, right? In your book, you were talking about how it affects, you know, your heart rate, your blood pressure, cardiovascular disease. Well, just imagine if you and I had a shared grudge against some place in the world, like the way, you know, even in the United States, blue states versus red states, or, you know, countries and tribes and religions, and everybody's, everybody can find a way to fight. But if you and I have a grudge against something, then that's what bonds us. And then when we get together, we complain or say nasty things together, our blood pressure goes up. If you, if you create a cultural identity around that, then everybody's blood pressure goes up and everybody's like their health is affected by it. And that's when stuff gets really dangerous, you know, that they're just bad people in the other group or the other tribe or the other religion. They're not worthy of full humanity. That's what happens if you keep this stuff going, and in particular, if you join with other people around it. You know, you get a, like, shared brain of, like, they're bad and we're good. Yeah, so we are always, that. that's the same, you know, one person starts that negativity keeps going around between the group members continuously. That's all the talk is about. 
being negative. And, and forgiveness is um, giving that up. Okay. Just kind of letting go of your negativity. Your, I mean, I don't mean you personally, your resentment, your bitterness, whatever it is, your quarrel with life so that you can like open your door and see that it's still a beautiful sunny day. When you feel so saddened all the time, how do you see that beautiful sunny day outside? How can we try to see good within that? Like for example, right now with this pandemic going on, people turn the news on all the time. That's all they hear. Oh my God, they didn't have PPE. This many people died. We, you know, this politician did not do this right. That one did not do that. So that's all is going on all the time. So how do they get out of that and see something else is out there? Something good is also coming out of this. Now the whole world has come to its knees. What are we learning from this? We have to look for it. So you could ask yourself, like if I look over the last couple of days, was anybody kind to me? So you could prime yourself to look when people are kind to you. Did I see anything about people being helpful, not just about them? You know, you read about people who, when like toilet paper and everything else were really in shortage, some people would try to put on disguises so they could go to Costco twice. So that's the worst, of, not the worst, but that's a bad part of humanity. But there are stories of good parts of humanity. It's up to you in part what parts you want to find out about. So they all exist. I mean, the world is a horrible place and it's a beautiful place. So they're both simultaneously true. We just choose which parts of it to see. It's like, you know, we can't see it all. So we choose what part of it to focus on. So it's really in our control how we want to view the world as. Or then we assume, I don't think it's completely in our control. No, we're, we're programmed by our nervous system. We're limited by our cultures. And, and I think there is some basic biological protection that says I have to really pay attention to things that might harm me or have harmed me so that I can keep myself safe. Because right? of previous experiences. Yeah. So within that, we have some choice. We also have choice whether we calm down or get all aroused about it. We have some choice about that. So what we can focus is what we have, what's in our control. Something, you know, whatever is happening outside or, you know, uh, that's not in our control. So what you do right now, that's in your control. That's what you're saying. Well, um, I mean, you want to you want to find things that you can influence you could look at it as the the serenity prayer you know like to wisdom is knowing what i can't influence and what i the difference between that and what i can that's that's a key mental health practice don't don't waste your time saying why didn't my husband love me don't ask that question five years later. It's not going to do you any good. For six months after they leave, ask yourself that question, why didn't my husband love me? You'll come up with some answers that there was something wrong with them, and you'll come up with answers that there was something wrong with you. And so you want to work on the parts of you that need some improvement, and you want to let them take their problems and you know let them go. But it takes time to grow like that. 
what can we start off with initially if you want to if we want to grow um to see what you know i want to improve whatever is um needs to be improved within me so what do i start off with because you have to learn stuff and you have to go through things before it is you grow from them so you have to see where you've made mistakes or where you weren't at your best. You have to notice that and and then deal with it. You can't you can't do all this in advance. It's it, that's what living life is. So if a person is in distress, is it due to their external situation or is it within them that you know? Um, the example that you have just said usually both you know they've had a difficult probably external experience or two and they've handled it in a way that resulted in distrust i mean it's it's both other people have difficult experiences and they learn compassion because they realize that other people have had difficult experiences. I want to feel for them. You know, it's there's a, the the range of human experience is infinite. What forgiveness allows us is a letting go of some of the negativity that we have held, and it's it's bonded to us by blame. They're the ones responsible for what my suffering is i'm letting that go i'm not i'm not saying what they did was okay but i'm letting go of my link that keeps me helpless in the face of their um, experience so when we do that what is that internal content that we feel you know um as okay i'm trying to let go um of that and um, you know, i'm not going to hold a grudge so how is that going to help me by not holding the grudge yeah well your mind will be freer to think of the things that um are positive your body won't have as much tension and this short time you spend on the planet will be a little bit easier for you because you won't be arguing with the past, which is a, a waste of your time. We, what, what does it mean? I mean, we argue this shouldn't have happened. This is wrong. That's fine, but it doesn't mean anything because it is. And, and there's a certain, we, we all have some resistance to simply making peace with the part of our lives that we don't like. And after a while, the smart make peace. You know, they just, you know, it wasn't what I wanted, but it's what I got. I'm okay. You know, that that's That's where forgiveness leads you to some some place of contentment and acceptance with your life it's it has nothing to do with whether they're okay or not okay it, it's you know good bad or indifferent this is the life that i got that's the goal and make the best of the life that you have and most of us don't because we're still fighting old battles That's why most of us don't make the best life that we can because we're fighting old battles. And most of those battles, there's no way to win. Because if somebody left you, they're gone. If somebody lied to you, it's over. If somebody hurt you, it's done. If somebody didn't like you, either there's a good reason or they didn't, but that's... You know, it's human beings waste so much time in unnecessary bitterness. So 
film. The 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 there's a bumper sticker with the wonderful definition of forgiveness. Forgiveness is giving up all hope for a better past. So that's it in a nutshell, right? Yeah, yeah. Because if you don't forgive, as you said, it it reflects in our relationships with others um, on a day to day life, and you know, every day you're miserable from something that has happened in the past. Um, and and even more, what what people don't want to recognize is the the past if we're stuck in it interferes with our ability to be in the present that's what the biggest like i don't even know what the word is but that's what we forget we think it's free that we can just have our negativity and our quarrels or blah 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 but it comes with a cost and that cost we pay is in the present that cost is not in the past. And that's the piece. Wow. That's beautifully said. It is, you know, it just is. And it's, we've helped people get over some really awful things by helping them reorient a bit towards the present towards more acceptance and towards more i'm i'm even going to say like care um caring kindness um just like there are other ways of being in the world that aren't as difficult inside and we can practice them so it's mostly practice that determines our experience, not what happens to us. So we need that intention. We have to have that intention to make sure that we practice it over and over again so that over time it will become a habit. That's exactly right. So well, and Go ahead. The reason that it's so hard for people is they don't want to recognize how many bad habits they have. They say, I mean, with everything, they say learning something new is really hard. And that's true because, you know, we, we've come up with habits to make sure that we do the same thing over and over. I mean, that's a good way of mostly living but it's not the best because it makes sense for freeing up energy for novel things, but it's not the most alive way because new things come and new habits need to be formed to adapt to life. It, it, it's, it's part of this experience and in particular, when those habits are about things that have harmed us, then we don't realize how limited we are by those habits. Mm. So, so the thing we have to be aware. We need to be intuitive of that. And, and you know, we need to have that awareness. Yes. And then have the intention of, letting it go how we are going to keep practicing over and over again and the thing is you're always practicing you just have to ask yourself what you want to practice you're always practicing something yeah so forgiveness is usually substituting some habit of release for bitterness So that's in order to promote good mental and physical health. And, and, and to, to give you much more peace of mind about your life. Because everybody's life has difficulty. Everybody's. 
and everybody has been mistreated and everybody has been you know lied to at some level some people worse than others but it's this is part of life and you don't want that you want that to injure your life as little as possible that that would be my thing we, when when we look at what we call our definition of forgiveness and it's i don't know it's cheesy um it's making peace with the word no that's that's how it's like dealing with the fact that you get no and how do you deal with it how do we deal with that no how do you deal with things successfully it's a it's a like you use the word intention your intention determines to some degree how you process things. So, and I, the little piece of this that I teach is to forgive things, yourself and other people, to let them off the hook, to let yourself off the hook, to realize you're going to be dead for a very long time. You might as well get there without, is without like, crippling yourself along the way by being bitter and bitterness not only you know it affects everything and then you know you'll start having all these physical symptoms and taking for that going to the doctor trying to get prescriptions for that which the root cause is not addressed awesome. just the symptoms are being treated with all the medications yeah, and I would say that usually physical symptoms interact with psychological symptoms and the psychological symptoms make the physical symptoms worse. Mm -hmm. For some seriously angry people, the anger itself can cause physical symptoms. But more often, it's an interaction effect that makes it more difficult for somebody to deal with. Okay. Yeah, I've had clients who whose life is a mess because they're just bitter about what happened to them sometimes 20, 30 years ago. It's, it's like it's such a waste. It's like you want to just remind people you're not going to be here that long. Do your best to enjoy it. You're not permanent. It's, uh, that, that's my that's my attitude about it you're not permanent nobody promised you you're going to be permanent bad things will happen and um, the more you can let go of talking about them and obsessing about them the easier time you will have yeah that that makes sense um very very much and you know how what you talked about it forgiveness is a proven prescription for health and happiness that's that's what you say in your book um you know by letting go we can you know ease all the stress in our head and you know push away all the trash out so that you make room for new memories to come in to build new relationships and, and uh, the only thing that I will add to that is you'd really be surprised at how few people really embrace forgiveness. It's, if for something this helpful, it's really hard. And I'm not sure I fully grasp why more people don't try to do it. But it's really hard. It, people want to hold on to themselves as being violated and they want to think that the world should treat them better and they they kind of want i don't know what the word is they want to be special in a sense that it, it doesn't work but i don't find that many people jumping towards forgiveness 
Is it because they feel comfort, they have comfort in that victim mode um, rather than a hero mode? They feel more comfortable in that? I think that's a part of it, yeah. Um, that, and, and another piece of it is just a habit and people don't like breaking their habits no matter what it is and there's some people who like punishing other people you know they want somebody else to suffer so revenge revenge exactly and both of them are wired into the brain i mean forgiveness and revenge are wired into our neuro architecture so we're meant to have them as possibilities as a human being so they're not wrong they're just often wrongly applied but even though we are mentally programmed we can we have the capability of changing that program to some degree in a better way right you know so we do have that capability of shifting it from that mode to some degree we do yeah and and the more you want to the more likely it is you will shift it but it also takes effort and attention i have found that people tend to think about forgiveness when they get really sick of their own suffering and become almost as tired of themselves as they are of whatever it is that hurt them. Like they just, I just don't want to do this anymore. And they pick their head up out of the sand and they go, oh, that's right. I don't want to do what I'm doing anymore. I can't stop them, but at least I'm going to stop me from doing things that don't work for me. That's usually the entree or they meet somebody who has forgiven something remarkable and it makes them think. So if that person was in a concentration camp and isn't bitter, I can handle a bad ex-husband. You know, that, that, those, are, those are some of the ways. Um, and when we teach, we remind people that it's not good for your health to hold a grudge. And it is one of the not healthy mental states for physical well-being. So what's the one advice you can give to our audience today from our conversation today? You know, what is that one thing that they can take and start implementing? I'm going to tell you two. One is to um, actually cultivate gratitude for what's good in your life so that you have something to balance the things that aren't so good and you have to cultivate it because it won't come naturally. So that's essential. And the second is if you're in a habit of getting pissed off at people, take a deep breath and take a half a step back when you're getting pissed off and just let it pass for a moment. And those are the two simplest practices to give some um, perspective on an experience. Yeah. Thank you for that advice. That's um, uh, easy to start, imp you know, focusing on those and then move forward after that. Um, so for the audience, if they want to find you, where can they locate you or get additional information about you? I'm not a big promoter. Just look, you can look me up in Google and there's, you know, I don't know, 50, 75 videos of me teaching, and I have a couple successful books on Amazon. But, you know, um, I'm, I'm not out there promoting myself per se, but you can see me teach or you can read what I write. I'm not, I'm not hard to find in that way. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very, very much, Fred, for your time with us here. We have learned a lot from you and looking forward to connecting with you later down the road. Thank you. All right. Are you done? <laughs>